You are the Murray Lerner who pioneered the, 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 the music documentary, and, and, and what I wanted to ask you is um, just reminding people that, that, that much of this was shot in 1963, how you came about to, uh, uh, to document these various Newport festivals. Well, a friend of mine invited me up. I was a folk music fanatic uh, at that time, and a friend of mine who knew that invited me. Is this working? Invited me up to uh, Newport to help them uh, do better at filming an archive that they were trying to preserve. They had no professional help, really. But when I got there, I suddenly realized, I mean, I realized that more was happening than just folk performances, but that a new subculture was being created through the use of music, especially folk music, and uh, trying to express uh, the new ideas of that young generation. And that's what excited me, so I decided to go on and make a film about that topic, actually. Because I wasn't interested in just uh, a, a thing about the festival itself without that bigger idea behind it, so I went on to do that. What, what, what kind of films had you been doing before, though? I uh, had been doing some documentaries, some industrial films. I made a film on... Uh, Education at Yale, it was on PBS. I made a film about disturbed children, both of them on uh, PBS. When I say before, then around that same time, I think, yeah. I mean, I'd made the film before I did festival, but I finished it afterwards. And it's interesting you mention it because I became friendly with Paul Butterfield, and I got him to let me use his music without the words for the soundtrack of the film on Yale. And that was the first film to use electric music as a soundtrack. And that film got really great reviews. And the education editor of the Times really liked it, except for one thing. He said that the uh, combination of that kind of music with this venerable institution was really bad. And uh, he was wrong, but uh, it, uh, there was that feeling at the time. And festival, which I guess is the, the was the culmination of these films, that had that had a commercial release, didn't it? Uh, commercial in one sense, but it, it, it didn't get such good distribution. Uh, let me put it that way. Yes. Uh, okay. Before I, before I open it up, I just had two two short questions about about this. One is uh, the, the having to do with the, with the mythology of particularly the '65. Uh, Festival. I always thought that uh, after Dylan was booed for singing uh, Like a Rolling Stone, he came back and sang It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. But no, Tambourine Man was before that. Yeah, it's an inter interesting that he sang a crowd pleaser in, in between. But okay, so that's. <laughs> Is there a musician in the house that can tell me? Was he singing in the key of E, by the way? F. 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 Puts the cape on. The other question is, uh, is, it, is it true that uh, Pete Seeger took an axe to the uh, amplifier? No, it's not the slightest possibility. And uh, no, 